morning guys. Today we are visiting a coffee plantation just outside Medellin, like 30 minutes outside and I am super excited because as you know I love coffee. So we're going to learn about I guess how they grow it and then we're going to see the roasting and get to try some. Uh, yeah, this is going to be amazing. This is Mario with his donkey. No shoes. He's never worn shoes in his life. Yes. I would kind of want to feel the bottom of his feet. Do you think that's weird if I do that? His hands here as well. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Feel that. Feel that. He uses the, the shovel, right? No way. To, to bring stones or pebbles from the river, right? <laughs> oh wow. What's the donkey's name? La Mona. Mona. Mona it's a mula. A mula. It's a mule. Ah. It's what's, a mule. what's the mule's name? Mona. It's a Mona. Mona. The Mona, the, Mona the mule. We've been given walking sticks. We're going to go on a bit of a tour of the plantation now. The farmer, Alejandro, is teaching us a lot about not just his coffee farm, but about coffee in Colombia in general. So firstly, 95% of the coffee farms are small family owned coffee farms, like under two hectares. So I think you were saying 550,000 families are coffee farmers in Colombia. And their coffee farm here, they have like 5,000 coffee plants. And they've split their coffee farm into five different kind of areas which all have slightly different coffee because of the way the sunlight hits it and the other plants that are around it. Um, but unfortunately, and this is something that's really sad, that the farmers in Colombia only see 1% of the profits of the coffee sold because a lot of it's shipped out, um, prices are really low, and then a lot of it gets roasted, ground and packaged elsewhere. So they're trying to pull back the um, kind of the, the whole process back to Colombia so they can profit more. Um, I think the numbers he was saying was something like $220 billion are made in the coffee industry globally every year and only 20 million are seen by the, um, by the locals here. Pick one of the coffee beans. You say squeeze it, but it's it's gonna pop out. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Just taste the so white thing inside. Inside you will find two. Oh, seeds. that white thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. Raw coffee bean. I've never tasted one of these. Wow. I don't think it really tastes of coffee. Is that what they're saying? Not yet. Correct. No, yeah, it doesn't taste that. It doesn't taste the coffee yet. As I was eating that bean, I was like, I wonder how people first thought of kind of roasting, grinding and drinking this when it, it doesn't immediately taste that great. And apparently the legend is that an Ethiopian monk was watching some goats that were all like hyper and realized they'd been eating this bean. So he took some of the beans, back to his house, tried them. They weren't anything special, so he just kind of discarded them in the fire. And then as they were burning and roasting, he could smell this delicious coffee smell, so decided to pick them up. And as he did with a lot of his other herbs and stuff, kind of made them into a drink. And that's how people first discovered coffee. So um, I think that's pretty, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool origin story. They are very respectful with their rhythms with the cycles of nature. Zero use of chemicals on the soil or the plants or the fruits they, they grow. So they don't use chemical fertilizers, they don't use chemicals to kill insects, right? Because they try to control them instead of killing them, right? That's it. Right. 
this is the depulping machine that they used to use. So I'm going to drop these red coffee beans in. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is when I turn this, it strips all the pulp and the shell from the outside. And then this is what they then end up roasting. And this is the, this is the final product. This is a fungus that can attack the coffee plants and they combat it with like a garlic spray. Is it a natural yeah. kind of garlic? Garlic, spray? onion and chili pepper. <laughs> That's so good. So So we've seen how they grow the coffee. We're now gonna learn about the next stage in the process. We're also just walking around seeing all the other stuff they grow here. Like this is, they, their whole farm is organic and this is amazing. Check it out. Once they've extracted the beans from the coffee cherries, they wash them to get all the kind of like pulp off, dry them in the sun, and then some of these go to, um, I guess, get roasted and made into coffee. Some of them get replanted in this nutrient rich sand, and then you get these little kind of sprouts, these coffee beans sprout into the plants, and then we're about to take this and go and see the next stage of the process. I'm planting my own coffee plant, this is amazing. Esteban's adding some of the soil. They're going to sieve it out. Oh, yeah. Right, where do we, where do we put this one? In the back. Yeah. More? More time. Fill it up. We are going to make room for this chapola. Just stick my finger in? No, no, no. no. Oh. There is a tool, a oh. very high-tech tool. Cogemos la chapola. This is yours. Okay. I'm gonna Select. call him Derek. We got this. We got Derek. Yes. So we go all the way in. Twisting a little bit. Yep. Oh, twisting. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Like yeah. this? Yeah. That's good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah, pick it up. Take that out. Right. Yeah, Derek. Also Open twist in. it so you make sure that the main root is straight down. Straight down. Push down and then press to the center. Towards the center. So the soil is embracing the roots. Oh yeah. And then, yeah, he's good. Okay. Yes, Derek. Derek. <laughs> I, I believe in you, buddy. You can do it. You're gonna grow the best coffee. <laughs> You're amazing. Five months, Derek's gonna grow to this size. Is it easy? Huh? Is it easy? Uh, no, I think this would be hard work if you were planting a whole farm of coffee. This would be. Yeah. I got you, Derek. Derek, senior. <laughs> uh huh. And then I fill it in with this guy. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is actually amazing, like planting your own coffee plant. It's okay. You have to level with the surroundings, otherwise it will turn into a bowl. I got you, buddy. <laughs> I'm so excited that I got to plant my own coffee plant. And now I know how to do it. Maybe I should germinate some coffee beans back in LA and see if we can grow a coffee plant on our roof. Do you think it's a good, a good enough climate to grow coffee in LA? No, it has to be super high altitude. Oh yeah, okay. Put it on the roof. We'll try, yeah. This is the modern depulping machine. The skin is separated from the seeds. Seeds go to this drum. It, it separates it by size. And this other, in the other side, the skin goes through this canal towards the big tanks outside for the compost later. The cherries, then these seeds come out after they've got the kind of pulp mixed off, but these still have shells on, so we've just been taking the shells off, which you can see here. Then it leaves the actual green coffee bean inside. But this is the, this is the mechanical way that they, they de-shell the beans. Oh, 
farm is uh, it's got the Rainforest Alliance uh, certification and she was saying that that means that they are like socially and, and environmentally um, responsible about how they make everything and um, I think they look after the workers, make sure they're giving them not just a good wage but that they're looking after their insurance like health insurance and pension and it's also to do with like how I guess it's all sustainable how they're looking up looking after the farm and growing everything so they're nothing there's no rainforest getting um, torn down for these farms um, I think there's like stringent things that they need to abide by to get that to be certified uh, with Rainforest Alliance so um, I don't know if there's a better certification or whether there's like more that can be done but I think it's a great start to have the Rainforest Alliance um, thing that's cool we're now directly above the room we were just in and this is where they drop the the cherries from the coffee plant which then get depulped and deshelled and stuff this little greenhouse on the roof is where they sun dry the coffee beans and they just lay them out here and uh, the hot air comes from underneath it's like a greenhouse in here it's, it's hot I think this is a polytunnel right is that what they call it yeah what can they do with the defective ones can they use this for anything or they just yes, throw it away? Yes, still goes to commercial brands. <laughs> but because they this is where, this is where Starbucks get their coffee. This is the defective coffee. No, we have not mentioned brands here. Uh, right, we're learning how to make coffee in different ways. Chemex, Aeropress, French press. What's this called again? Italian. 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 Mocha, mocha italiana. La, la prensa francesa, el, el Aeropress, el sifón. La chocolatera colombiana. Ah. This is like the this is like the Middle Eastern way to make coffee, right? Yes. Turkey. Yeah. Uh -huh. the this is like a science class. Mm. They're making us the coffee now. So excited. Coffee making is a very exact science. You guys with coffee dry, we're going to smell the fragrance. When it already has water, it will be the aroma. Mm. So it goes up, goes up because mixes the with the grain, and then and so when it cools down. down because there is no flame again anymore. Because, so when it cools down, it, it's down. Well, let me have a little. Let me have a cheeky little sniff of this one. See, whenever you go to your coffee shop, it's better that you ask them. If they know their coffee grower, right, like Leticia, for instance, where is this coffee coming from, from one, what country? Is it organic? It's important. Uh, are they fair with their workers, right? Is it environment, environmentally sustainable? Vamos a probar primero este método y luego el otro. Gonna then, taste it now. Then you blow it inside like a sort of like little tray. Yeah. In the third one, you will find the real the real flavor. That's well nice. <laughs> I'm gonna drink all my coffee like that from now on. No, please. <laughs> Raya doesn't like coffee, so she's gonna give me hers. So. The first sweet, bitter, watery. <laughs> that concludes our coffee plantation tour and learning about the process of making coffee. I think this has been incredibly special for me because as you know I'm kind of obsessed with coffee. It's something I've been drinking for like more than a decade and this is the first time I've really learned about the full process of what it means and how to make it and even down to like planting the coffee plants and I don't know I just think it's really challenged me to look into and explore a, a lot more on like how the things I consume are made, whether it's like the things I'm eating, how they're grown, where they're grown, how can you support the, the right people and ensure that, for instance, like the, the farmers here and the people that are really, you know, dedicating their lives to doing this are making the most and not being kind of cut out of the profits. So I think like learning about how we can do things more ethically and support the people that really matter and yeah, I, I guess as well, just just being more aware of, you know, even down to like what we're wearing and just consuming in general, I think we're really cut off in this day and age from from the process and how we how how we get to where we are right now. So I want to learn a lot more and take you guys on this journey as well of 
of really looking and researching into the supply chains and the process of everything I'm consuming in my life. And I think it's a journey, obviously it's gonna take time and, and I think I'm learning as I go, but yeah. I, ch I challenge you guys as well just to really research and look into um, how good the things you're consuming are and, and the process behind them. And also if you guys want to experience this, like I've said in previous videos, we are now selling and have launched the Live the Adventure group trips where you can come out to Colombia, um, partnered with FTLO Travel, and you get to experience this exact same itinerary that we're doing and including this coffee tour. And uh, yeah, if you want to do that, check the link in the description and I will catch you next time. Peace out, enjoy life, and live the adventure. Boom.